negotiation helps you to resolve situations where you want conflicts with what someone else wants. And the aim of the negotiation is to have a win-win situation, a solution that is acceptable to both parties. And it's going to leave both parties feeling that they've won in some way after that event. Here, honesty and openness are always the best policies. Take a moment to ponder, how do honesty and openness apply to negotiations? In 2000, Chris Povis published research investigating whether or not honesty was essential to negotiation tactics. His conclusions demonstrated that although business ethics don't always have clear set rules and regulations, the best policy is to be honest. We can be careful without being deceptive, he admonished administrators. Harvard Law School expounds on the necessity to remain honest throughout a negotiation process in an article entitled, Negotiators, Keep Yourself Honest. Set a personal standard. Before entering a negotiation, set a personal ethical standard for your behavior. How ethical do you want to be? Determine in advance which behaviors are off limits, and that should help you to recognize the ethical dilemmas when they arise and make decisions that meet your standards. Moreover, make a plan to address specific ethical dilemmas that you may encounter. Take a moment to ponder and record in your learning journal, what could dishonesty do to a negotiation? The best negotiators almost always turn out to be the best listeners as well. Why does this correlation exist? Invariably, the best negotiators have been observing communication skills, both verbal and nonverbal. They are watching their counterparts. They have heard and noted how their other negotiators effectively use word choice and sentence structures. They have also practiced listening for the vocal skills, such as the rate of speech, pitch, and even tonal quality. Unfortunately, few negotiators know how to be good listeners, 
and negotiators who are poor listeners miss numerous opportunities in their counterparts' words. Statistics indicate that the normal untrained listener is likely to understand and retain only 50% of a conversation. This relatively poor percentage drops to an even less impressive 25% retention rate 48 hours later. This means that recall of a particular conversation will usually be inaccurate and incomplete. Ponder and record in your learning journal. What role does listening play in negotiation? So listening really is one of the most effective and essential skills developed by a leader. An effective listener doesn't just hear the words, but pays attention to the nuances associated with the message that's being shared. It requires the listener to hear the words as well as notice the subtle nonverbal messages and the body language of the speaker. One of the most valuable methods to improving listening skills is to use active listening. This requires that the listener blocks out all surrounding distractions and focuses intently on the speaker. You cannot allow yourself to become distracted by whatever else may be going on around you or by forming counter arguments that you'll make when the other person stops speaking. Nor can you allow yourself to get bored, lose focus on what other people are saying. All of these contribute to a lack of listening and understanding. To enhance your listening skills, you need to let the other person know that you are listening to what he or she is saying. To understand the importance of this, ask yourself if you've ever been engaged in a conversation when you were wondering if the other person was actually listening to what you were saying. You wondered if your message was getting across or if it's even worthwhile to continue to speak. It feels like talking to a brick wall and it's something you want to avoid. Acknowledgement can be something as a simple nod of the head or an uh aha. -huh. You aren't necessarily agreeing with the person, but you're indicating that you are listening. Body language and other signs to acknowledge you are listening also reminds you to pay attention and not let your mind wander. You should also try to respond to the speaker in a way that will both encourage him and her to continue speaking so that you can get the information you need. While nodding and ah uh says you're interested, an occasional question or a comment to recrap what has been said communicates that you understand that message as well. So take a moment to ponder, in what ways can you improve your listening skills? The greatest asset to negotiation is the development of problem-solving skills. 
So Dr. Chester Crass authored a book entitled The Negotiation Game, in which he shares four reflective questions to help with the problem-solving process within that negotiation process. The best method is to ponder and to take a few moments before you walk into a negotiation problem or a negotiation situation to go through each of these questions and come up with answers. First, how can both parties benefit when you work toward the achievement of your joint goals? Second, how can both parties benefit when you work actively to help achieve the other party's goals? Third, how can both parties benefit by helping the other party to work for his or her goals? And fourth, how can both parties benefit by giving up some goals in favor of others? The problem-solving approach argues that negotiators should work together as colleagues to determine whether an agreement is possible that is better for both of them than no agreement. In doing so, they should postpone commitments while exploring how to best maximize and fairly distribute the value of any agreement. And it makes sense for one party to take this approach even if the other does not. The problem-solving approach emphasizes parties' underlying interests rather than their positions and encourages the parties to maintain and build their relationship even if they disagree rather than creating an adversarial process. Take a moment or a minute to ponder and to record in your learning journal why should both sides approaching a negotiation come to the table with an attitude of problem-solving? And how has an attitude of problem solving aided you in the past? In the simplest sense, decision making is the act of choosing between two or more courses of action. Decision making involves choosing between possible solutions to a problem. Decisions can be made through either an intuitive or reasoned response or a combination of the two. Intuition is that gut feeling about the possible courses of action. Although people talk about it almost as if it were a magical sense, intuition is actually a combination of your past experiences and your personal values. It is worth taking your intuition into account because it reflects your learning about life. It is, however, not always based on reality, only on your perceptions, many of which may have resulted in childhood and may not be very mature as a result. It is therefore worth examining your gut feeling closely, especially if you have a very strong feeling against a particular course of action to see if you can work out why and whether that feeling is justified. Reasoning is using the facts and figures or data in front of you to make decisions. Reasoning has its roots in the here and now, in the facts. It can, however, ignore the emotional aspects to the decision, and in particular, issues from the past that may affect the way that the decision is being implemented. Intuition is a perfectly acceptable means of making a decision, although it is generally more appropriate when the decision is of a simple nature or needs to be made quickly. More complicated decisions tend to require a more formal, structured approach that is going to involve both intuition and reasoning. Let's take a moment to ponder. Would there be a value to using only intuition or reasoning in a decision-making process? Why? 
or why not? And what would be the value of using intuition and reasoning together in a decision process or decision making situation? In the negotiation process, it is understandable that all participants will desire to achieve the best possible solution or outcome for their position. Yet leaders need to help and to guide and direct and develop the skills to assist in this development, aiding all parties to feel the solution is equitable. Effective negotiation skills are going to require honesty, listening, problem solving, decision making, and providing a win-win situation for all parties.